Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel Dynamics. This is the fifth video in the CNC series in which I will be demonstrating how to build a CNC machine from scratch. In this video, we are going to make the connections from the stepper motor and I am going to use these block connectors. As you can see, they are made of plastic and for about a dollar I got all the connectors I need, about 36 pieces I need. So I have grouped four of them together or I have cut four of them together so that uh, I can be, uh, they can be used for each motor. I am using a double sided tape to fasten four connector piece to a motor. I uh, will just remove the screws up front so that it is easy to connect the uh, stepper motor connections. The only catch here as I mentioned before in my previous video, video uh, there are six connections to this and as you can see I have uh, uh, cut two and five and tape them so that they are not shorting to anything and the only other caveat is that we have to make sure that you are connecting in them in the same order 1, 3 and 4 and 6 from left to right on the stepper motor this is the only thing and you have to make sure that this consistency is maintained all the way till the controller board when we are going to connect the controller board to this we have to make sure that the same order is maintained that way there will be no problem with, uh, later so this is reasonably straightforward once you have uh, uh, established the color sequence or, or the order 1, 3, 4, 6 just go ahead and connect them to the block connector in that order for all the motors I have done this for both the Y axis the next step is to do for the X and Z axis here we are going to need 8 pin connector because we have 2 motors I am just removing the screws loosening the screws up front so that it is easy to connect so again here also the same thing make sure you are using the same order 1 and 3, 4 and 6 or the, or if you can remember the color sequence that is also a good idea. So I have made connections to both the motors and I am using a double sided tape to hold it to the Z axis. The next step is uh, uh, instead of using the drag chains, I'm using the spring uh, and I've just looped it and uh, put it on one of the bolts and tighten it using the nuts. Eventually, I'll, I will place uh, washers so that it will be easier. If we attach the other end of the spring to in the center of the uh, board, then it will take care of, then everything will be fine. And as you can see, I'm using the uh, half inch electrical insulation pipe. I got this for a dollar or like about six meters. I'm going to use this uh, loop and, and fasten it into the spring and one side is connected to the bolt and the bolt and other side is connected uh, to the center of the board with the help of a one two inch screw as you can see so I'm going to drill the hole in the center of the board center of the Y axis and uh, I'm going to put the uh, bolt in first and then I'm going to put the spring with the uh, hook and uh, a washer and a nut now this will hold in place and as you can see it moves pretty smoothly without any interference the next step is to uh, attach the or uh, use the uh, insulation pipe I'm just gonna cut it to length uh, I'm going to remove the spring and uh, just insert the spring in this pipe After you've inserted, just uh, attach it back. Like I said, I'm going to use washers on this later. So eventually we are going to uh, insert the connections of the motors through this pipe. That is the idea. So once uh, I have attached the other end of the spring in the center of the board, I did a test run and everything looks good and also there is no interference from this, uh, this spring or uh, pipe to anything else. It is uh, it, it turned out good. I did the same on both sides and I have also added the washers as you can see. Now this is fast and well, it will not going to fall apart. I used a double sided tape to attach the uh, pipe because it was protruding outside. 
So like I said, I did it for both sides. The next step is to do the same for the Z and X axis. Here we are going to need two wires. So I use one inch thick pipe and this is the door magnet that are used for doors. And I removed the metal piece and I just uh, marked it on the Z axis and I drilled holes. This We are going to use this metal piece to uh, hold the cables in place because these are very thick cables. These are hard to maintain and I want to make sure that they don't rip off the connection when the spindle is actually moving. So I'm going to loop this uh, spring as I did for the other axis and I'm going to insert the screw, wooden screw this time, not bolt. And then I'm going to put the metal piece. And the back side of the CNC, this is the back side of the CNC, I did exactly the same thing. As you can see, I placed the metal uh, piece. And uh, as you can see, this is how it looks. The next step is to drill holes underneath the metal piece in the back side. This is where the cables will go in and all the cables will be underneath the machine so that it won't be exposed, so that they won't be exposed outside. And we are going to pull all the cables to one side. And these are the cables I'm going to use. Uh, let me tell you right away, this was a bad idea. Uh, these have four core cables with a shield. This turned out to be very high maintenance. It was strong, it wasn't flexible enough. But I went ahead with this because I had this lying around. I didn't want to buy anything else. And you can buy something very simpler, something very thin. Anyway, inserting them into the insulation pipe is very easy. Just go ahead and ins insert them. It comes off very easily. Pull out the cable. Uh, as much as you need, uh, based on where you're going to place the controller, I'm going to place it on one side of the machine. So I just measured it and pulled it out. And the next step is to uh, cut the wire to length. As you can see, I'm fastening it with the washers and uh, I'm going to use a zip tag to fasten the cable to the spring so that it won't come off and remove the connections and rip off the connections. The next step is to cut the cable to the length and then remove the shield and expose the cores of each wire separately and then connect to the four connectors of the stepper motor. Now again here also uh, you need to remember the order so in this case just make sure that you are following the same sequence of colors on both sides of this cable. The, the other end of this cable will go into the controller board which we will discuss in the next video. But yeah, you just need to make sure that you're using same order of colors. Now I did the same thing for both the y-axis. The x-axis you need two cables. I already removed the uh, shielding before inserting them into the pipe. And inserting them into the pipe is reasonably straightforward because uh, this is one inch pipe. And uh, I just measured the length and inserted as much as I needed. I need. And uh, I pulled the cables through the metal piece that I have fastened earlier. This is only to hold them in place when we make the connections. If you don't use this, then every time the spindle moves, there is a risk that the connections will just be ripped off. That is the only thing. Make sure that you only pull what is needed. We don't want to make this section of the machine clumsy, look uh, very untidy. So make sure you only pull as much cable as you need. Once you have done that, I'm going to tighten the uh, piece. It doesn't have to be very hard. It just needs to hold it. That's all. The next step is to pull the, the cables through the holes we have already uh, drilled. And uh, this way we are going to make the entire connection all the wires come under the machine so that uh, they are not exposed and uh, it looks good. Again, you don't have to tighten it very hard. Just make sure that they are, uh, the, the metal piece is holding it. That's all. The next step is to connect the cables to the uh, connector. Again, like I mentioned, just uh, use the same order of colors of the four colors. Then there should not be any issue. There you go, it is done. I have also inserted the cable for uh, spindle. This is a, a 5 ampere cable right? oh, for 20 volts, 200 volts, 220 volts. 
next uh, i'm going i've connected a plug for this as you can see i have connected the female side of the plug to the uh, power connection and the male side will go to the spindle that way we can make sure that uh, even though the power is connected the exposed core is not connected only when it is connected to the spindle that way the power is never exposed the next step is to pull all the cables to one side and i'm going to use these metal pieces to hold them in place on the underside of the board this is only to make sure the connections to the power controller or motor controller is easy i'm just going to pull all cables out of this and uh, that should do the trick so this is all for this video we will see you in the next video and uh, thanks for watching if you like this video don't forget to click on the like icon and uh, don't forget to subscribe thanks for your support